All right, so let's talk a little bit about the direct marketing approach to database marketing. We talk about marketing, we refer to it as the science of exchange, that is facilitating exchanges between individuals or individuals and organizations. Direct marketing is an interactive approach to marketing which uses one or more media to affect a measurable response or transaction. So why do we call it direct marketing? Well, we call it direct marketing because of the nature of the communication and offering process. Direct marketing consists of any marketing that relies on direct communication or distribution to individual customers, rather than through a third party such as mass media. Mail, email, social media, and texting campaigns are all among the delivery systems used. It's called direct marketing because it generally eliminates the middleman, that is, some sort of advertising media. Direct marketing is a promotional method that involves presenting information about your company, product, or service to your target customer without using an advertising middleman. It is a targeted form of marketing that presents information of potential interest to a consumer that is determined to be a likely buyer. So what we really mean when we say direct marketing is we mean an organization decides to communicate directly to its end consumer about making an offer. No retailers involved, no um, um, uh, middlemen in terms of either distribution or advertising. Everybody is a direct marketer. Direct marketing is used by almost all firms, but it is certainly most prevalent for online companies. It's called direct marketing because the firm communicates directly with its targeted customer and makes an offer. Targeted customer can either accept the offer or decide not to accept the offer. But when we talk about database marketing, database marketers are different from other direct marketers. The big difference between more traditional direct marketing and database marketing is that with database marketers, the direct communication offer is made to someone in their database. This allows the database marketers to make a specific offer to a specific customer based on their knowledge of the customer targeted. In that way, the database becomes a private marketplace where only the owner of the database has access to that customer base. That is why it is often stated that the database is perhaps the firm's most important asset. The keys are interactive and measurable response when we talk about direct marketing. So direct marketing is both a communication system and a distribution system. An example of it being a distribution system system is that we we directly send the product to our customer and that is often is done with an online organization through email so who uses direct marketing well about 98 percent of the fortune 500 companies use it on a very very regular basis approximately 60 percent of all advertising expenditures are direct marketing and of course, the percentage is ever increasing. While some online companies use traditional marketing approaches like banner ads and sort of passive marketing, where they set up a website and wait for people to Google it and visit it, most are more proactive using email and mobile marketing. Direct marketing is still the fastest growing area of marketing, and it's been this way for almost 30 years. Why is that? Well, first off, it works. That's a good idea, you know, using a marketing program that works. Second, it's measurable. And since it's measurable, it means that it's accountable. That is, I can, I can perform a marketing, a direct marketing campaign or make a direct marketing offer, and I can find out how many people responded to it. With general advertising, the problem is we don't really know how many people watch the advertisement and we don't know how many of those people were influenced by that advertisement 
Third is that it's focused. I don't waste time and money communicating to people that are not going to be interested in my offer. Fourth is I can actually reach my customers. It is a proactive approach as opposed to a passive approach where I wait for customers to try to find me. And then fifth, you have control. You can control when the direct marketing message is offered, who it is offered to, and specifically what the message and the, and the offer is. Oh, and, and oh yeah, it's used by almost all online marketers. Here are some of the typical direct marketing vehicles. And this is one of the reasons, by the way, when you look at some of these uh, direct marketing vehicles, that you can see that direct marketing has been around for a long time. And direct marketing has always uh, been the subject of people who are critical of marketing in general. They often refer to direct surface mail as junk mail. So there are some direct mail offers. And of course, this is, is a, an offer I make to you via the mail. It can also be bill inserts. Every time you open one of your water bills, your gas bill or your electric bill, there are bill inserts in there, people making offers to you as you pay your bill. Things like Val Packs and, uh, and things like that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that um, in another session. Catalog marketers are another way of direct marketing. Now, when we think of catalogs, we tend to think of hard copies of catalogs, but they could be online or PDF versions of catalogs and offers. There is individual catalogs and then there are co-op catalogs. Co-op catalogs is when uh, a, a, a distribution company or a retailer uh, puts a catalog together and the individual companies help pay for the cost of the catalog to get their product included in it. There is telemarketing, and of course, this is one of the areas of direct marketing that many of us don't care much about, especially at this time of, um, of the election cycle when we get uh, all sorts of messages every single night, it seems like, on our landline. Telemarketing includes inbound telemarketing. And of course, inbound telemarketing is when you call a company uh, you know, you call your credit card company or you call your, you make, you initiate the, um, the telemarketing. And then there's outbound telemarketing where the individual company does the telemarketing and they call you on the phone. And of course, this is one of the most irritating areas and, and it can be stopped for the most part. It can be stopped if you simply go to the, um, direct marketing associations do not call list and put your phone number on that. And then there are 800 and 900 numbers that we're all familiar with. Everything from the psychic hotline to who knows what else is involved in 800 and 900 numbers. We have interactive television. And of course, with HSN, the Home Shopping Network, and QVC, uh, we're very familiar with home shopping networks. And then there are, of course, infomercials. And infomercials used to be one of my favorite areas of research and one of my favorite areas of consulting because the infomercial business is an absolutely fascinating business where people are selling um, uh, everything uh, from uh, fitness equipment to the latest uh, fitness videos to the latest cookware to the latest, back in the good old days, the Ron Popeil pocket fisherman. There are direct response advertisements where we use either radio, newspaper, or magazines to try to get an individual to directly go to the company's website or directly call the company and make an order. These are things that you will see in, for instance, Sunday's Parade Magazine where they will say, you know, you need to call in to get the most recent Franklin Mint uh, Christmas ornament. And then, of course, there's electronic commerce affectionately referred to by all of us as the interweb. Uh, electronic commerce direct marketing vehicles include websites, targeted banner ads, email, social media sites that in fact drive you directly to a website to make an order, Google AdWords, Google AdSense, behavioral targeting, and SEO and SEM, of course, and SEO is, um, uh, is a is more organic in its nature. And this, of course, is search engine optimization. 
and SEM, which is search engine marketing, is uh, more paid-oriented marketing uh, in terms of Google. There are kiosk shopping, you know, when you go to the airport or whatever and you and you can buy uh, something, you know, attachments for your iPhone that you forgot and left at home. And then, of course, there's all the other sort of funny direct marketing vehicles like bumper stickers, matchbooks, and all of the other sorts of collateral material that companies will buy and distribute. The keys to success for all direct marketing all direct marketing, all direct marketing success is determined by three things. The first thing that impacts the success of a direct marketing offer is the offer itself. What are you selling and how are you making the offer? For instance, if you will go on TV and watch an infomercial for Flex Seal, they will always make an offer where they double the offer on the flex seal and they and they and they basically say you know you can get two cans of this flex seal uh rubber uh product for twenty dollars well that's the offer and the specific offer makes a makes a a a big difference in terms of the direct marketing success we uh, it, uh historically it's uh it can increase or decrease the success by 500 percent so that would mean, for instance, anywhere from a, uh, you know, from a 10% uh, a success rate down to a 2% success rate up to a 50% success rate. Um, the, uh, the second issue in the success of all direct marketing items is how. That is the packaging and the presentation and the message. Uh, little things that are involved in this, for instance, uh, direct marketers that do infomercials find that people with a British accent will outsell people with a traditional American accent. So who makes the message, how the message is presented, and how the packaging fits together in terms of a direct mail piece or an online direct mail piece uh, might impact the uh, success of the direct marketing and the response of direct marketing by up to 300%. And then finally, and the most important aspect of all direct marketing successes is the who. That is, who is the target audience? Who is the person? Who are the people that I am sending the offer to? This is the number one driver of direct marketing success and response rates. Um, I'm going to give you an, a, an example of this that I that I um, that I often uh, use in face-to-face -face discussions with clients. I was working with the Thomas and Max um, Rebel Athletics program back in the mid '90s, and uh, they were trying to sell tickets to Rebel football games. And I was in a meeting and I had made the suggestion that maybe rather than spending advertising dollars on television and newspaper ads, that perhaps we could go back and do a direct marketing campaign. And I was thinking that that we might target, you know, former season ticket holders, alumni, uh, people who uh, maybe buy a list of people who watch a lot of college football uh, and, and subscribe to college football magazines. There's all sorts of ways that we could target this. And then when I was in the meeting, someone in the meeting immediately said to me, no, we're not doing any direct marketing because it doesn't work. And I said, really? I said, how, how do you know that? And they said, we tried it and it didn't work. And I said, what do you mean you tried it and it didn't work? They said, we tried a direct marketing campaign four or five years ago and we got virtually no responses. I said, uh, really? Really? I said, I said, I said, how did that, how did that go? They said, well, we were trying to sell football tickets, season tickets. And so we got a list and we emailed an offer for discounted season tickets to that list. Well, of course, you know, I know that I know the key success elements of direct marketing. I know that part of it's the offer, part of it's the messaging, and then part of it is the who. And of course, the who is the most important aspect. So I immediately focused in on that and I said to them, who did you send the offer to? 
And they said, a new mover list. And I looked at them. Um, and of course, a new mover list are people who have recently moved into that city. So these would be people who had just bought a new house in Las Vegas and had moved here from some other location, California, uh, the Midwest, the East Coast, or whatever. And I said to them, why did you select that particular list? And they said, well, that was the best list to send to because they don't know anything about Rebel football. So we thought they would be the easiest to send it to and convince them that they should buy season tickets. Now, you and I both know that, that selling a product like football season tickets to people who know nothing about the local football, university football team, have no affiliation with it, and oh, by the way, have just moved to town and are trying to figure out where the grocery stores are, buy, um, um, uh, you know, buy blinds for their house, get their landscaping in, get settled in their new jobs, um, are probably not going to be interested in, buy, in buying season football tickets. So in this case, they're right. It wasn't successful. And of course, it wasn't successful because they were, selling, they were sending the direct marketing offer to the wrong individuals. So if you send the direct marketing offer to the wrong individuals and a wrong list or the wrong database, uh, your chances for success go down dramatically. Some direct marketing issues that you need to be familiar with, trust is critical. And then of course for trust, it's a matter of service is the key. Uh, if, uh, you know, and so companies who, who, who have issues with customers not trusting them, have to be able to provide some guarantee, some some um, reviews or something to build trust with customers. Another direct marketing issue, of course, is the issue of fraud. And you know that that direct marketing um, that a lot of fraudulent organizations make make offers with a, in a direct marketing context. There's the issue of direct marketers with privacy, and there's the issues with direct marketing with complaints. One of the areas that I wrote in uh, many years ago and have a couple of the most critical uh, pieces of, um, of uh, research in terms of direct marketing is our topics of complaint management. So here's a, here's a, a sort of a really quick direct marketing example. You own a strip property. You notice that you have a two week period in June where your reservations are way below expectations. The majority of your customers come from the LA area, Southern California. What would you do? Strategy number one, buy three one quarter page ads in the LA Sunday Times travel section. It cost is about $96,000. Uh, circulation for that though is 1.4 million people. So the cost per thousand is 1735. Or strategy two, Buy 30 second ads on all four LA networks for the 11 p.m. news, five days a week for two weeks. Cost $87,500. And send and then have people call your particular hotel and make reservations. Which do you think is a better approach? Well, of course, it's neither of those. It's strategy number three. Go to your database. Select your best 150,000 prospects based on previous mailings and responses to your direct marketing offers. Develop a message and an offer, cost $75,000. This, of course, will generate the most response and will fill those hotel rooms the easiest. That's why most firms are direct marketers.